Now past the main storyline, I was able to pick up a few missions, uh, like recovering Typhon's last Echo Logs to give him a proper send-off. His robots really appreciated that. Although, this giant beast I was not expecting to encounter at this point. Luckily, I had this pretty sweet legendary grenade that I got from one of those Gigamind runs, and that worked out pretty well. In celebration, the robots had a dance party. There were, of course, more trials to complete, more cool guns to experiment with, more levels to accrue, crew challenges I just didn't have the patience to complete at the time or forgot about, buttons I probably shouldn't have pushed but did anyway. What are you doing? You'll kill us all! <laughs> nah, that's some bullshit. Don't worry about it. And once I hit level 50, I had some golden chests to open because I figured, why not? But the truth is, you probably know about most of that, right? You know that the end game of Borderlands is really just the beginning. Because there's always going to be a ton of other things for you to do, and you can technically play it endlessly as long as you would ever care to. But I'd like to actually talk a little bit about what I thought worked and what I thought didn't work in the game. We'll start with some of the things that didn't really work. One, there are some glitches, uh, some freezes, as I've showed you in the playthrough, which are just uh, surprising. There is some slowdown, not nearly as much as some people have said, at least it, not in my experience. Uh, but occasionally it did feel like the game was stuttering, mostly when I moved through transition screens. And I really would have liked more fast travel points to go to because every time I needed to go to one, it felt like I was just going back to the beginning of a very long area in some cases. Really feels like there could have been more points. I do like that they include some Battle Arena style areas like Cistern of Slaughter or Slaughter Star 3000, which you get toward the end, where Mr. Torg will take you through one of those traditional arenas that you've seen in previous games. I just wish that the individual pieces of that were not significantly as long as they are because it makes them pretty difficult to actually complete. It reminded me a lot of the original Borderlands and uh, Mad Moxie's Underdome, where you just kept on going over and over and over again to try and complete just one round. I feel like that could have been compartmentalized out a little bit more. The trials do help to extend out the late game, but they do get increasingly difficult. I would actually suggest, if you try them, to do them at a lower level, like when you first get them, because by the time you get up to 49 or 50, somehow the enemies get significantly harder than you've grown in power. Which actually brings me to the fact that I was personally surprised that I was able to max out my level without even going into true Vault Hunter mode. Uh, usually I didn't expect to hit a level cap until you've been through like true and possibly an ultimate Vault Hunter mode. But I do understand that with as long a tooth as this game has, chances are we're going to see a few level cap increases before we're all done with content. And while I actually found the story to be quite nice and, you know, I liked to see where the character arcs went, I do understand the criticism that there is a plethora of characters that will probably annoy the hell out of you. That is kind of a Borderlands thing, but still. Also, if I'm being completely honest, um, True Vault Hunter mode is a little bit disappointing. Although you can do the missions again, you can't actually, like, do any of the other challenges, crew challenges, like the Iridian writings, all of that stuff. Uh, none of that resets. Uh, you know, the only thing that actually changes is that you can go back and do the regular missions. Most of the time, I just kind of feel like you could practically just do farming from Mayhem mode, and it wouldn't be, uh, you know, a significant difference. <laughs> that bandit spine's not actually gonna work. <laughs> I just wanted some payback because those bastards broke my machine. Still, I appreciate your dedication to capitalism. 
Now, find one of those shock skags. It does give you an opportunity to go back and try some of the optional challenges or do things in different ways that you might not have been able to do the first time. But okay, time to respawn and talk about the good stuff in this game, which is basically everything else. If you like anything about Borderlands, you are going to find it here. It is probably the most Borderlands of any Borderlands game to date. I like that they added in some new moves like sliding and vaulting that make getting around the landscape a lot easier and more fluid. I like that the different character classes really had more personality that differentiated themselves in terms of how they actually play. Uh, I like that the guns actually felt all different. You can pick up three different kinds of assault rifles, and they actually all function differently, even though they're in the same gun category. Far more than we saw in previous games. Between alternate fire modes and all the different elemental abilities that you have, uh, it's just a, a wide variety and changes up some of your playstyles too when you uh, find a new cool thing in a chest. The customization options that they have now for your gun skins, for trinkets, for your heads, for your skins, for your color palettes, everything, that's really great. Kudos on that. It really made me feel like I could personalize my character. I uh, also like the Guardian rank system that they had post-game. Uh, I actually preferred this a little bit more to the Badass ranks because the Badass ranks in 2 were all about completing specific challenges in order to do that. Guardian Ranks actually just uses the experience that you would normally gain, so that even if you have gotten through level 50, you are still accruing that experience and you just put it into that. That was kind of nice, it feels a little bit more organic. I like the refocus on exploration. They really want you to go around all of these maps, look at everything. That's why they have the crew challenges, which really helps with that, and different like Iridian artifacts and special chests that you can uncover. And you never know where you're going to find the next great gun. It could be in a locker of all places. That just encourages you to look into every nook and cranny of the game. And while you'll encounter some enemies that are definitely just damaged sponges, the majority of the combat, the regular combat, is really more about fast and furious gameplay rather than just trying to hit an enemy with a billion bullets. It's a lot faster than that. The place where you mostly experience damage sponges are when you get into the trials, the arenas, especially if you're in mayhem mode. I did like the ending of the game. It was actually not lost on me that we are back to having three sirens. After all of this um, siren boom that we were having, we, we are actually back to just the three. Not the three that we started with, but three new ones, essentially. And it is also not lost on me that the commander of the Crimson Raiders seems like the deadliest position to be in in this universe. The thing that did kind of confuse me is that there are some major characters from the series that never actually come into the storyline. You never even meet them. Krieg is kind of there because you get some of his audio logs, but most of the characters that you met in pre-sequel uh, just don't show up. Aurelia is one of the boss battles, but Athena, nothing about Athena really, nothing about Janie Springs, and they were pretty important at this point. Uh, other characters that you met in Tales of the Borderlands... I don't know really what happened to the rest of, like, Reese's crew from that. Uh, and, like, half of the playable characters from Borderlands 2 just not in here at all. So I'm hoping that they're actually just saving that uh, for, like, the expansions. They'll probably mention them or bring them up or bring them back in those. That's probably the plan. It's also probably the plan that we're going to get a little bit more information about some of the other companies because while we are familiar with, like, Malawan and Torg and uh, Jacobs now uh, and uh, Atlas, now that Reese has kind of brought it back to life, uh, there are still several that we don't know much about, like what's happening with Dahl, uh, what's going on with Vladov, uh, Anshin, Pangolin, there's a lot of companies and a lot of questions that can be explored as to what's happening with them right now. So time will tell to see, uh, you know, what uh, actually happens with the game and if some of these questions that are out there now, for me at least, in terms of some of the characters and the storylines that can be explored are going to be explored. 
uh, and it'll be interesting to see. Until then, though, thank you if you were watching this series, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you are enjoying the game, too. And uh, if you do, please let me know what you think about it, and if I've uh, forgotten any uh, pertinent comments therein. Thanks. Bye. She's lighting the way. <laughs>